In this video, we're going to look at five must-have extensions for Microsoft Edge browser and for the Google Chrome browser. Before we get started, if this is your first time here, please hit the subscribe button and then the little bell for notifications. We publish computing-related videos all the time, and we don't want you to miss any of them. Thanks for subscribing. And now, on to our subject for today. The first extension for Chrome and Edge that we're going to look at today is a dictionary. Now, a dictionary can really help you. It can help you with spelling. It can help you replace a word that you've reused too many times in the same paragraph or the same story or the same letter. And it can give you synonyms. So we want to get a good dictionary, and I found one that I really like. It is the same dictionary in both Edge and Chrome. So we're going to look at it. We're going to start with Edge. I go up to the three dots in the upper right-hand corner. I click that menu and go down to Extensions. The one we want to look for is called Instant Dictionary. So we'll type that in. Hit the Enter key. And you can see it's the first return. It's called Instant Dictionary by GoodWordGuide.com. We'll click on Get. It wants to know, do I want to add it? I'm going to add the extension. And when I do, a little notice comes up to tell me that if I have any other tabs open, the dictionary won't work in that. I click OK. Now, here are the options for the dictionary. Let me go over these. The first one that's checked is when I double-click a word. That's when the dictionary will pop up. I like that. The next is when I select a word or a phrase. So that would be as if I was highlighting a word or a phrase. I leave that one unchecked because usually when I highlight a word or a phrase, I'm going to do something with it. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to delete it. So I really don't want the dictionary popping up at that time. The next option is when I do a long click. That means if you hold a click for a second or longer. Um, that one is um, a little confusing, I think, sometimes. And so I take the check mark out of there. The font size is 11 pixels. That's fine. I do like to store the word history, so I make sure that the check mark is in there. Now I click Save, and it tells me that my options are saved. So let's test it. I'm going to start a new tab, and I'm going to go to 4KCC blog. I'm going to just pick any blog. I'll pick the tracks of my fears. By the way, I hope that you're signed up for our blog. If you're not, the link to sign up is in the description below. I write about six blogs a week, all computing related. All right, so now I have a blog up. What I'm going to do is I want to look at the word, at some word, and I want to double click it because that's the option that we gave. I double clicked the word bombarded. And you can see that I got a pop up for the dictionary. First, it tells me the definition for a verb, for a noun, and then it gives me synonyms. This is such a great thing. I also have a little speaker where I can hear how it's pronounced simply by clicking the speaker. Bombard. If what comes up in the bubble is not enough information for you, like maybe you'd like some other synonym or something, you can click on more. And by the way, you know, when I say click, if you're using touch, obviously I mean touch. It's the same thing. So now here is a bigger definition of the word. Uh, it gives me a little uh, history of where it came from, etc. All right, so that's it in Microsoft Edge. Now switching over to Google Chrome, the Google Chrome store, you need to know where to get that. And there are a couple ways of getting it. But I go to google.com forward slash Chrome. And when I do that, 
At the top, there's a little menu and you can see extensions. I click on that. Now, I always like to use the computer to save time. So what I do is I made a bookmark in my bookmarks bar across the top. You can see it says Chrome Web Store. So now when I want that, I just have to click there. So once again, the same extension, Instant Dictionary. And you'll see that it's there, Instant Dictionary by Good Word Guide. I'm going to add it to Chrome. It wants to verify that I really want to add it. And just like in Edge, we get the pop-up that says, you, if you have any tabs open, it won't work. All right, we click OK. And now you have the same options. Once again, I'm going to leave the double click. I'm going to leave the word or phrase blank. I'm going to take out the uh, long click. 11 pixels is fine. I want to make sure there's a check mark in store words. And then save. Options are saved. I'll open a new tab. We'll go to 4KCC blog again. And this time I'll just go to the first one. You, you can bank on this. And down here, I'm just going to pick any word. Let's pick the word shows. I double click. And there's my pop-up. Gives the definition of the word shows as a verb and noun. It gives me synonyms. It gives me the little speaker I can click on. Show. Sure. And of course, I can click on more. That is the Instant Dictionary. It works in both of the browsers. My next extension has to do with Pinterest. Did you read the two blogs that I did on Pinterest? And I've also created a video earlier on Pinterest. All those links are in the description below. We're going to start with the Chrome browser this time. And once again, I had bookmarked a Chrome web store, so I just click and there I am. And now I'm going to search for Pinterest. And here's the Pinterest save button. That's the one I want. I'm going to add it to Chrome. I'm going to verify that I want to add it. And it is now in Chrome. It wants me to sign into Pinterest so it knows where to save them. And I certainly can do that. Now I'm signed into Pinterest and I'm going to open a new tab. And let's go back to the blog. And when I put my mouse on a picture, notice the little red icon that says save. And I could save it to Pinterest. Once I hit the save button, now I can choose a board to put it in or I can create another board. And again, I've done a video on Pinterest that shows you how to do all of these things. I'm not gonna recreate that right now because today's video is about extensions. The Pinterest extension is now in Google Chrome. Let's switch back over to Edge. Once again, three dots in the upper right-hand corner, extensions. All right, when the Edge opens, for this one, down in the lower left-hand corner, you see an option, Allow Extensions from Other Stores. I need to turn that on. Now, you can see it says, Can't find what you're looking for. You can ex get extensions from the Chrome Web Store. I'm going to search Pinterest again. And notice it says, Add to Chrome. Even though I'm in Edge, it says Add to Chrome. I hit that. Then I have to verify that I do want to add the extension to Edge. And once again, it wants me to sign in. I'm now signed in. Once again, going to the blog. And this time I'll pick, I got taken for $275. Here's a picture of me on a soapbox. Well, it's not really me, but... It represents me on a soapbox. So just like in Chrome, we have the Save button when I have the mouse over the picture, and I can click Save. Where do I want to save it? Current board, a new board. All right, that takes care of Pinterest, the second of the extensions that are must-have as far as I'm concerned. Let's move to the third one, which is a really cool one. Starting with Edge, once again, three dots, extensions. You'll know that by the end of this video. 
and now get extensions. This time I want to look for turn off the lights. And there it is at the very top. I'm going to click get, add the extension. And it brings up a page that explains it. It tells you how to change options, etc. When we look at the little icon, you put your mouse on it and it says turn off the lights. I'm going to right click and go down to extension options. There are lots of options and you can go in and spend some time and decide what you like and what you don't like. But I am going to show you one that I suggest you do right away. Under advanced options, down under dimness level bar, till you get started, I think it's a good idea to always show the dimness level bar when the lights go out. So I'm going to click that option. Now I'm going to close edge. I'm going to reopen it and I'll show you what this does. Once again, going back to the blog, I'm going to go up here to the top, our YouTube channel and click on that. Now I'm going to choose this video about how to prepare for a hurricane. I go up to the icon and click on turn off the lights. And watch what happens. The screen goes dim except around the video. In the lower right hand corner, turn off the lights. This is the dimness level. The default seems to be about 80% usually. I actually like it a little darker than that. So I can slide this and block out pretty much all of the rest of the screen. I like that option. And I would suggest you keep that level there until you are kind of say, okay, this is, I like 90%. Then you could go back into the options and do away with the level if you really don't want to use it. If I just go up and click the turn off icon, we're back to the regular page. I love this extension. Let's take a look at it in Google Chrome. So now in Google Chrome, I'm going to go to the Chrome store. I'm going to search, turn off the lights. And there it is, turn off the lights. Add it to Chrome, verify, and it's now in Chrome. Once again, the instruction page comes up. I'm going to go in, um, first of all, let me show you in Chrome. You notice the extension icon is not showing up in the upper right hand corner. If I click the little icon for extensions, you'll see turn off the lights and there's a little pin. I'm going to pin the extension to the address bar area. Now I can right click on that pin and I can go to options. Once again, I'm going to go to advanced options and I'm going to say always show the dimness. All right, let's try it. Once again, we'll go to our web page, then our YouTube channel. And this time I'm going to pick the video on Pinterest. And I have it muted. I simply go up and hit the icon. Once again, you can see it defaulted to 80. I'm going to move that. And of course, you could go the other direction. If you, you know, don't want it as dim, you can do that too. But I like it dark like that. Now it's almost like being in a movie theater and I can watch without having to go full screen, which I might not want to do for other reasons. I can simply use that. Our fourth extension is speed test. Let's take a look at it in Chrome. I'm going to go to the extension store. I'm going to type speed test. And the one we want is the first one, speed test by Ookla. I want to press to add it, confirm it, and now it's in my extensions. All right, once again, I don't see the icon up there. If I want it, I click on the extension icon and I'm going to put speed test. I'm going to pin it. Well, I'm there. I'm also going to pin dictionary and Pinterest. I like them. All the ones I use all the time, I like them pinned. So now for speed test, here's the reason you might want to use that. You're going along on the internet and all of a sudden things slow up. All right, is it your computer? Did something happen to your internet speed? 
So while you're on a web page in Chrome, and then later in Edge, we're going to do the same thing, you can click to get the speed test. And here's what happens. A little window comes up. You press go and it will check your internet speed, both download and upload. Now, as I'm making this video, I'm actually a little down today. Uh, most of the time it's over a hundred here, or sometimes as close as 200. But today it went to 94.79 on the download. The, the upload speed is going to be 23 something probably. Let's see what that is. 24. 24.09. Those are good speeds. So if I was working and my computer slowed down on the internet all of a sudden, I know it's not the internet speed because that's plenty of speed is something else. Let's take a look at it in Edge. Three dots. Extensions. Once again, we have to go to the Chrome Web Store, just like we had to do with Pinterest. And we'll do speed test. And now it says add to Chrome. Confirmation, do I want to add it to Edge? I'm actually adding it to Edge, not Chrome, even though it says that. I'm going to confirm. And now, there it is. So once again, if I'm on a website and things slow down and I want to confirm the speed, I can simply hit the icon, then hit go, and I get my download and my upload speeds. Our final extension for this video is the Amazon Assistant. So in Microsoft Edge, once again, three dots, extensions. Get extensions from Microsoft Edge. And I will search for Amazon Assistant, and there it is. I'm going to click so I can have the extension in the Edge browser. I'm going to verify that I want it. And now it's been added. And it wants me to, of course, to sign in. And the Amazon Assistant, one of the things you can do, you can check updates on your orders. You can look at new deals that are every day. You can comparison shop when you're online somewhere else, and it'll tell you what Amazon has a particular item for. And you can create a universal wish list. There's so many things you can do. In Google Chrome, it's just as easy. We're going to go, of course, to the extension store. And Amazon Assistant for Chrome, we're going to add it to Chrome. And once again, it will want me to sign into my Amazon account. So that's it for the five must-have extensions. As you can see, you can use them in Google Chrome or in Microsoft Edge. It really doesn't matter. They work in both of them. So whichever browser you prefer. And as you know, sometimes some sites work better in one browser than in another. Same thing with extensions. Sometimes they work better in one than the other. So give it a try. If you have questions, use the comment area below the video. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so and hit the little bell for notifications. Thank you for watching our video and thank you for subscribing.